with us. Right. But uh, yes, so much. Yes, is correct. Um, are, are, are you you're, you're still alive, which is nice. You have you been sleeping or what? Was it a bit, I, so was I pulled it a big an all-nighter. I mean, okay. I know I look like garbage. Uh, hopefully it's audio only for most of you this week. But uh, I did not sleep after the Charlotte show. Mm. I went out I went out drinking tequila uh, against my better judgment. So I woke up like an hour before the show. I'm wearing it today. <laughs> and, of course, it's Super Bowl week, and yet there's so much going on in the MMA world that I, I can't even think about the Patriots, right? I yeah. think this whole Daniel Cormier, Stipe, Miocic thing has been a welcome distraction, and we're going to talk a lot about that today. Of course, we're going to recap the Charlotte fights. Jacare Souza back in a big way. So I want to start with the super fight, and you can certainly call it that. Daniel Cormier, UFC light heavyweight champion, moving up to challenge the UFC heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. They will coach on the Ultimate Fighter. They will meet July 7th. So we had an inkling, Kenny, that this was in the works and could possibly be happening. I spoke to DC right after, or excuse me, the day before it broke, and uh, talked to him at length about it. So I'll get into some of that. You and I had a little bit of a disagreement last week, I guess, yeah. as to the merits of a fight between DC and Stipe. Um, so I'm just going to start with the fact that I think he has a, a great chance to win this fight. I do believe Stipe is the greatest heavyweight of all time. I'd love to see him capstone his legacy with a win over DC or, or Cain Velasquez. I think Stipe is the greatest heavyweight of all time, but... I think people just don't understand physically what Cormier brings to the table. I think they're a little bit fooled by the frame. He went 13-0 and as a heavyweight. He went 25 minutes with Josh Barnett. Uh, and as Brian Stan would say, Kenny, until you roll with the guy, maybe you don't have a complete appreciation for the physicality. Uh, I think this is a competitive fight, and I'm excited to see DC seize the opportunity. This is a huge fight. Uh, you know, Daniel Cormier, he, he's just a winner. Uh, you know, he's a guy who has been winning for the majority of his life, whether it was wrestling or mixed martial arts. He knows how to win. Um, you know, this was this was tough because what was he going to do? He cleared out the division, right? He's already cleared out the light heavyweight division. The only fight out there for him um, that's semi-interesting of a guy that he hadn't fought was Glover Teixeira. Um, but I, I think we know the result of, of that fight already. And, and because of that, um, I don't know if that's the most exciting fight for a lot of the fans. Um, right. I, I think he beats Glover. Um, I, I think of the rematch against Gustafson. I think he, he wins that fight, even though that's dangerous. And for Stipe, you know, obviously this is a man who knows how to wrestle. He was a division one wrestler, certainly not at the level of, uh, of Daniel Cormier who wrestled in two different Olympics or qualified for two different Olympics. Um, it's it's a guy who is a heavyweight knockout artist. This is a guy mm -hmm. who's knocking guys out in the heavyweight division and doing so against some of the best strikers. Um, you know, it, this is a tough fight for Daniel. Um, it, it's an amazing fight. It's quite the opportunity. And I think at this point for Daniel, this is one of those legacy fights, right? If he can't yep. get that fight or get get a win over John Jones, you, you go after the, the, the big game, uh, and, and that's Stipe Miocic. You go out there and win a heavyweight champ, world championship fight. Um, I mean, Daniel's already going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. If he's able to pull this off, yeah. um, you know, he, he would absolutely solidify himself as maybe top three, uh, you know, top five uh, ever to compete in the octagon. Yeah, huge opportunity for him as far as the betting odds are concerned, right? Francis Ngannou was a minus 185 favorite against Stipe Miocic a few weeks ago. That is the price that Stipe is at now against Daniel Cormier. Mm -hmm. If Stipe was fighting Cain Velasquez, I think it would be closer. But given Cain Velasquez's layoff, I still think you're looking at Stipe in that minus 150 range, Kenny. I right? agree. So, <clears throat> so it's a little bit more pronounced with Cormier as you would expect. I want to talk about the alternative for Daniel Cormier. Mm -hmm. If this fight doesn't materialize, right, if Francis Ngannou beats Stipe and those two run it back, this was the perfect storm. They were competing on the same card at UFC 220. Both men got the desired result to make this happen. But this easily could have been nowhere near the table. And that would mean that the alternative, Kenny, was, was Daniel Cormier at 39 years old putting his UFC light heavyweight title back on the line against the guy who gave him his toughest fight. Obviously, the John Jones fight, certainly, yeah. uh, in January of 2015. Um, but October of 2015 at UFC 192, Cormier versus Gustafson, this is the fight that DC talks a lot about. And that was going to be the next fight. And I'm not going to sit here today and say unequivocally that I believe the Gustafson fight is more dangerous than the Stipe fight for Daniel. But there's certainly an argument to be made 
Dominic Cruz would make it, not just because Gustafson is his teammate. I just think a lot of us see a lot of different variables for the Cormier-Gustafson rematch. We see Gustafson as a guy who kicks, kicks to the head, has a lot of different yep. ways to win, has an easier cut down to 205 pounds than a 39-year-old Daniel Cormier presumably would have. And I just see all of those factors measuring up to a big ask and a pick em fight between Cormier and Gustafson in their rematch. So I just don't know that the alternative is a picnic. And that's why I just think for Daniel, not only was this steep A fight appealing, but I got to think in some respect, you know, putting that Gustafson rematch off and maybe even with finality was appealing too. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and let's talk about risk reward, right? I, I mean, w what would he have to right. gain in winning a rematch against Gustafson as opposed to winning a fight against Stipe Miocic? Uh, first of all, um, you talk about uh, the risk and reward in regards to what he has accomplished. He has the ability to win two belts, to do it in the heavyweight division. And obviously the Steep Bay fight is going to garner a lot more money and attention than the rematch against Gustafson. So right. for that, I, I like the fight. I still think this is a very uh, dangerous fight for Daniel. This is the most dangerous fight of Daniel Cormier's career. Um, yes. Just based on the punching power of Stipe Miocic and on the momentum yep. that he has here. Now, if this fight doesn't materialize, I, I would imagine that the UFC would have Cain Velasquez maybe on the back burner or, or maybe right. ready and waiting. Uh, hopefully he stays healthy. That's another fight I would like to see happen. Uh, Kane and Stipe uh, should, you know, Stipe either win the fight or whatever, something not happen. Right. But, uh, yeah, man, exciting times, especially given, you know, the, the, the things that we're hearing uh, for, for that weekend, uh, for, for fight week, right. for, for Cormier, right. <laughs> Mitchich. I mean, some amazing fights that are, that are yeah. being talked about right all, now. All the, thing that Kenny, all the things Kenny Florian is, is hearing about that he can't share with you today. <laughs> yes. uh, do you think it's also a case of striking while the iron is hot when it comes to Cormier that perhaps Cain Velasquez could be ready by July 7th, but this fight on the heels of UFC 220 has some momentum and, and, and maybe they feel like Cormier, as we said last week, who's been on TV for five years, who has had these fights with John Jones, that maybe – that's a monetarily better fight for the UFC than Kane Stipe would be right now. And, and maybe that's why they're striking and not letting it go by the boards. Uh, without a doubt, dude. And, and I think that, you know, for the UFC, I think they've learned their lesson of, of striking when the iron is hot. And, and you can't wait around these days. You know, we all learned kind of the lesson between um, Ronda and Holly when they wanted to do the rematch. And, you know, things were delayed and that fight never happened, never materialized in the rematch. And, you know, that would have been a huge money fight. I think they're realizing that they have to get these big fights as soon as possible. Um, yeah. They're really trying to make these fights happen that the fans want to see as soon as possible, which I love. Um, and uh, exciting times ahead, man. Cain Velazquez pushed out a tweet that led people to jump to the conclusion that he would fight Daniel Cormier if Cormier beats Stipe. Now, given the extent to which Cain and DC have beat each other up in the gym, yeah. if both of them are going to realize a seven-figure payday, I'm not sure anybody would be all that surprised to see them fight, quite frankly. Right? I mean, if I they're mean... both – yeah. Maybe. May Listen, there's a lot. There's no doubt. There's a lot of money on the line. Both those guys would uh, definitely be seeing dollar signs. I don't see them fighting, though. I yeah. mean, I don't. I don't. Well, know, and again, man. I don't know what type of money you're They're pretty even close talking about, you know, no, no doubt about it. Right. And I think D.C. certainly likes his chances privately more against Steve Bay than Kane. Right. Right. Because right? he knows exactly what he's getting into yeah, with Kane. But true. it's also interesting because Cormier and, and Steve Bay spent some time together recently in Cleveland filming in the clinch for FS1. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, shoulder to shoulder all week in Boston, traveling together out of the yeah. red corner, man. So uh, it's going to be very interesting. Um, yes. And for Stipe, again, another opportunity to, to prove this legacy. We both think he's the greatest heavyweight right now that the UFC has ever seen. But I don't know. I just think it's very interesting. And I think there's a conversation to be had um, as to whether or not this is Really a much more difficult fight than the Gustafson one would be. I threw it out there on Twitter today. A lot of different responses. Mm. But, you know, some people are saying to me, oh, this is this is Gastelum Bisping all over again. I mean, it's like, what are you talking about, right? It's like, yeah. uh, you know, and I, I was saying sort of to be funny, Redman has this line at the end of one of his rap songs. It says, you know, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, figure that shit out when you get home. You know, laugh now and then figure that shit out when you get home. So when I pose the question, Kenny, who's a more dangerous fight, Gustafson or Stipe? I say, laugh now. Figure this shit out when you right. get home, meaning go watch UFC 192 and tell me that Gustafson isn't a real problem for Daniel Cormier. You know, yep. Cipe doesn't even kick. So I'm excited to see it regardless. Uh, July 7th, Miocic, Cormier for the UFC.